Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And welcome back. We are going to talk about CBD today and the benefits and how it can make you and all of us feel so much better, both mentally and physically. And I feel that CBD has been around for a while, but so many of us don't really know the deep details about it. You know, we've heard that, hey, that can that can help me, but what do I pick? What do I choose? What dosage? Well, Jacob is here. Jacob Jeske is part of the Purple Nugget and very unique in terms of CBD. And we'll get with that. Jacob, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm feeling just fine, Steve. Thanks for having me today. Did you have CBD already? No, not yet today. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, uh, I, I take it for sleep occasionally. But sure. what makes you really radically different is you grow it, which there are other companies that, that grow it as well and also have the products. But you do it hydroponically, which is completely different than any anybody I've ever heard of. Um, we talked about this last time, but real quick, just to recap, what are the real benefits of, of growing hemp hydroponically? Uh, just to kind of recap what we said, I don't want to get too deep in it all again. Check out the first episode for sure. a real deep understanding of it. But by growing it hydroponically, Typically, the plant will utilize about 50% of its energy, utilizing the roots to like dig deeper and deeper in the soil uh, to look for the nutrients in the water that it needs to grow uh, by just readily, rapidly making the water available hydroponically within like the 10 gallon buckets that we use. Uh, the roots don't need to spend all that time and energy uh, looking for the nutrients that it needs. It's just readily available. All that time and energy then is spent on the flower, creating the the resin and the flowers that we then need to extract the resin from to make all of our products. So it just comes back with a more potent, a bigger yield um, of a flower. And then also we control the light schedule, like I said, so we get more harvests than just a regular soil grower. I find it fascinating, Jacob. So the, yeah. the two things we got working here, the light and then making the nutrients, the water uh, available 24 seven for the plants. What's more important? Or is there anything more important, the light or the, the nutrients, the water? It all has to happen in a happy little ecosystem, I'll tell you. Uh, there's a lot of uh, temperatures, humidity, light too close, light too far, focusing on the PAR. Uh, PAR is like photosynthesis activity, which is like what allows the, the uh, plant leaf to actually absorb the, the energy from the light that it needs. And so there's a lot that goes into it. Um, you can make a lot of mistakes real fast. And so, you know, you have to kind of know what you're doing. It's definitely a kind of sewer way of growing. Um, I think that by growing the hemp hydroponically, you just really do get a better product out of it. And I just, I, all my clients stand behind it. You know, that's what I have behind me is just how, how much they utilize it and how much it helps them. So, so the average person, if I had uh, hydroponically grown CBD product here and, you know, let's say something grown in the field traditionally, would you notice a difference in terms of um, how well it works for you in, in terms of flavor, all of that? Would you notice a difference? Uh, with flavor, I think you definitely notice a little bit of a difference uh, just because the, the plant gets to absorb all the rights uh, to create the right terpenes and like really kind of make it so that the resins really, I'm going to step back. The resins kind of look like these little balls on the end of a stick. And they really kind of like blossom bigger and bigger and they get like really puffy kind of and they swell swell is actually the word i should use and they swell up with like the terpenes inside of it um, by having the right nutrients not all soil is the same as you can imagine uh, there's soil that has uh, too much metal in it so just it's got the wrong type of uh, rotation going on it doesn't have the right nutrients in it and so the plant will never find the right nutrients that it needs to be the biggest plant that it can like I said, by having these nutrients available for it at a readily, steadily 24 hour basis, it just allows the plant to grow to the most beautiful plant it can be. I want to tell yeah. everybody your, your website is thepnug.com for the purple nuggets. So oh, the right. letter P N U G.com. If I were to go to your house right now, Jacob, and I looked around your yard, would I see a lot of flowers and things, plants growing? Are you, are you that kind of that guy or? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right now. So when we first moved here, um, we had to, my wife got pregnant with my first son. And then uh, as soon as um, Theodore came, she got pregnant again, like I think six months later. So we had kids kind of back to back. We didn't have a chance to really step into our gardening game, but all this past weekend was nice enough that we started making our first uh, raised garden beds. 
And so right now we're focusing on, on that. Uh, we live in a really kind of uh, a, a pretty wilderness area here. So we got a lot of rabbits and deers that run through our yard. So we're trying to think of clever ways mm. to not just have a raised buffet for the deer and it's something that yeah. we can really pull away from. So, yeah, but yeah, absolutely. You'll see flowers all over the place around here. Uh, this is going to be a pretty good year for it. So. Yeah, I was just wondering, I was just trying to get inside your head, you know, if oh. you're, you know, deep into horticulture, that's your thing. I love plants. That's my thing. Uh, it, ask me the name of a plant. It's rare that I'm going to be able to tell you that, but I can yeah. plant them, you know, I won't say I have a green thumb, maybe a brown thumb, you know, I get thumb, plant, sure. you know, uh, but I think it's cool. That's why I find the, the hydroponic aspect of what you do uh, pretty fascinating. So, in what what you're growing, and I see you have the products there, which is super cool. Yeah. Let me pick one off the shelf and, and talk about one of those. You know, I want to start with the flower. Now, uh, this is hydroponically grown CBD that we pulled out uh, from last year. We cure it for quite a long time hmm. uh, just to really make sure that it stays the potency of it. Uh, what you got to do is pretty much lower the humidity and the moisture content inside the bud. And the longer you cure it, so you don't want to cure it for like way too long, but the longer you go, the more moisture leaves out of it. And I'm going to show you the difference here. And I'm, I'd be curious to know how cute, how long you cure it, <laughs> you know? Uh, three months is probably a, a prime time to cure it. Um, wow. And then that's kind of what I go for before I start putting it in my products, um, just because that's just the best way to do it. Sure. So there is a little bit of a longer process on it. And I'm sorry, I'm going to put some gloves on here just because that's a smart way to go about this. It can get pretty sticky. Here we go. But uh, I don't know if you can really see that. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So like if you can see like all these little tricones that are sticking off, it's kind of like what's making it glisten a little bit. The shine. I don't know. Can you see that? Yeah, very well. So like that's all that resin that I was talking about. Um, when you have like your typical, like, I don't mean, if you don't have it done the right way, you're not going to get all those tricones that are coming off of it. And, uh, the less percentage of tricones, the less percentage of CBD, the less percent of like what CBD is actually going into your product. So that's why when you see products on the wall that say, you know, one gram of CBD or a thousand milligrams of CBD is typically what you see. You know, not every gram of CBD is treated the same. I mean, that's just a gram of extracted resin from the flower. If your flower isn't top quality, you just get, you know what I mean? Your CBD, it can only be 30% of actual CBD inside that gram. Yeah. I mean, we're messing around 70, 80% CBD. So we're doing wow. pretty well. It's like, uh, you know, the old, uh, the old phrase, garbage in, garbage out. You know, exactly, you know, exactly. Product. Huh, interesting. Um, How long does it take, Jacob, from, let's say, seed to what you were just showing us right there, that, that process? So the full cycle, um, we have like a veg room, which is scheduled for um, 18, uh, six, which is 18 lights on, six hours off. And then we have another room, which is the flower room, which is 12, 12, 12 lights on, 12 lights off. From the first episode, I think people have a clear understanding of why we have to do that. We have a veg stage and a flower stage, just like the apples that we talked about before. You know, the apples are only going to produce apples in the fall because of their photoperiod type plants. Um, so that's why we have that. So the answer to your question though is actually around four months. It's like three months typically in the flower room, but I can get a clone, which I use a snipping. Like I don't actually use seeds. Seeds are a great way to start. But uh, you have to do sexing off of seeds. Like you can only get this flower from a female plant. Uh, you can't get, you only get seeds from a male plant and they'll just try to uh, pollinate the female plants or just make them stop growing the flower, make it start producing seeds so that it can survive for the next year cycle. So sorry if I... No, this is, this is, this is uh, you know what? That's why you do what you do. And, yeah, and yeah. So <laughs> everything I deal with is absolute female. Uh, that's really important to a lot of people that need to know that. Um, that's why we don't have any uh, hermaphrodite plants. We have no male plants. And by cloning off of the female plants, we literally carry the genetics from that plant over and uh, to the next plant. So that way I don't have to worry about any of that male or female stuff. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. Uh, when it when it comes to the products that you have, um, I'm hearing a phone ringing. I don't know if it's on your end or my end. <laughs> Yours. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we're getting a call. It. I don't know. 
Oh, that could be good. All yeah. right. Let me take a look here. That's so funny. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, interesting. All right. I don't know if that can be heard on our, our video there, but... Um, hey, this is yeah. too good. Right. Yeah, no worries. Um, I've often heard that CBD, you have to have the right CBD when it comes to helping somebody sleep. And that's, I just, I saw somebody yesterday, a friend, and all we talked about was her sleep issues. And, yeah. and there was a, there was a point where she, uh, she said that, yeah, you know, believe it or not, you would never think, but you know, the doctor prescribed uh, Xanax for me and just a little bit every once in a while, I'm like, you should be taking CBD. And just like everybody else, I'm like, I don't know what to take. I'm afraid, you know, I can't go to the doctor. Um, so if anybody had a question about that, they could reach out to you and get that info, right? Yeah, I hope so. I think so. Um, when it comes to like different types of CBD, like there's so much out there. There's a lot of stuff. Like when you look on the bottle and it says formulated, that's a big word that I stay away from. Uh, that probably means it wasn't planted or grown is formulated to act like cbd um and uh you gotta like you know stay away from like things like that but uh, i think it's kind of even harder to kind of like see the face of the guy behind the product like you get right now i mean it's really kind of hard to like really see how far back the product goes to make sure it's exactly what you need to do the cbd so like, i'm glad that i was a little bit nervous when we started doing this actually just because you know i'm like i i don't know this is i do a lot and you know i guess I, I just, I don't know. This is a big step for me too, but you need to know where your CBD comes from for sure in order to like really get the best benefits from it. Yeah. And, and, and trial and error. And I found that out before we met, I yeah. tried two different CBD products, different companies, notice a radical difference with the second one. Uh, you never know what you're going to get. That's why, you know, somebody like you takes pride in it. You have the passion in it. Um, it's local, it's family, and you know where it's coming from, you know, from, from plant to, to product. That makes a big difference in, in the, you know, the, the, the quality of the product. And, and also, I got questions <laughs> when to talk to somebody, you know? You, there's only so far you can do with, you know, uh, frequently asked questions on a website. Sometimes they're very specific when it comes to stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess a little bit of the answer for my last question was from your first one. We're talking like if you see one package at the store and one right next to it, how can you tell the difference? Right. You, know, you really can't. You got to read into it. And sometimes these packages, they don't even have a lot of information on it. That's another thing that kind of discourages me. So as we're talking about like which ones should you look for, you should find ones that have all the information that they can put on that package because they're trying to tell you everything about what they are putting into it, I think. It's the companies that have like just like little hype words on it that I'm like, okay, where is this really from? What's really right. in it? You know, uh, when I went to my first retailer and got in there, he was like, I already have all the CBD products I need. Like, I don't need anything. I'm like, well, actually, you have all the same CBD products. Those are all soil based. Where's your hydroponically grown ones? And you can show me. You can show me any of them. I was like, well, here you go. You can put this one on a single shelf and say, here's all your soil based here's all your hydroponically grown ones. And that was the only one you could put on that shelf. But I think he got the point of it that, you know, there is a difference between all these CBD companies. And that's why I'm glad to get to be the face of my company. And like, I get to do it at all the farmer's markets and answer sure. all the questions. But to do it on such a large scale like this is just it's a step in the right direction. I'm glad I get to help people. And I hope that by answering these questions, it is. Yeah, and it's and I really, really, truly believe that that is what's holding people back. More people from trying CBD products because yeah. they're, I don't want to say afraid, but they're apprehensive about diving in because right. they don't know about it. And where do they find that information out? Right. Um, so great, some great studies online. Um, I mean, you, you really are going to have to find kind of like your own, like, you know, places that you trust. Like, I really can't say I know everything. I'm, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say I know everything. I'm not going to say I'm the best at everything in the world. I'm just, you know, good at what I do. But the studies that are being done by these like places and like Harvard or all like, these major universities, I do trust that they know what they're testing for. I do trust the output that they're saying about these CBDs and all the great benefits that they're claiming it. And, you know, that's what I go off of. And I see that in my customers that try this product. So, I mean, I guess, I don't know when the time is going to turn for when the doctors are going to see that, you know, CBD or, you know, more med modern type medicines like this can be useful, but you know, you have to, I'm not going to go down that road either. Like, I don't know yeah, what's- I hear you. <laughs> I'm not going to get into that. 
Uh, you my know, mom's an actual, she's a nurse and uh, she's been one for quite a while. And um, I mean, she sees, she sees downsides to everything. You know, I mean, anybody could get even Advil, Tylenol, you take too much of that and you know, it's not, it's not the best for you. So, you know, I think you, you just nailed something there and I, it was so refreshing. Um, like, like your mom meeting somebody, a doctor who is pro CBD and actually suggests it. It's like very refreshing. Like, okay, you get it. Yes. Yeah. Medication, traditional meds have, have a place. There's, there's no doubt about that. And I, I they'll yeah. never be fully replaced, but why take medication when you can take CBD? That's all natural. It's going to make you feel better. It's going to do the job, maybe even better. Uh, unfortunately not covered by insurance, but when you take a look at the prices on, on your website at the pnug.com, very affordable when you, when you're yeah, like, you know, uh, extremely, extremely, especially th th that it's coming from, you know, somebody that has the passion and you're growing it hydroponically. Everybody says I need to raise my prices. I just don't think I need to, I'm doing well. I live comfortably. I don't, I'm not going to get into all that. Maybe one day I'll find a reason to, but right now I'm, right. I'm doing well. What do you find, Jacob, is the, is the main reason that people come to you for, for CBD? Is it anxiety? What is it? Um, a lot of anxiety, like the um, anxiety can be definitely for oils, but sleep patterns, um, arthritis, like I have like a really bad risk, right? Just like, it seems like it snaps a lot. So like, I definitely, when it gets worse, I rub that on there and just, it really helps it. I mean, you get to uh. put it on there once, maybe a half hour, put it on again, and you'll have like relief up like two days. I don't know what, I know it's like, it has more to do with like the inflammation. I just don't know what's really wrong with my wrist or why it clicks like that. But uh, I mean, I know once I put it on there, it definitely heals my wrist and my thumb. Uh, thank you for saying that. And uh, now I know what I need to get, cause I never thought about that. I have a knee. And I work out and I jog. I took a little time off, got back into it this week and, you know, haven't, haven't used the, the parts. And now my, my knees, you know, again, every once in a while, I feel a little like, mm, wow. All right. It just hurts a little bit or, you know, just an uncomfortable feeling. Never even thought I take CBD for sleep. Never even thought about um, using that for a knee. Um, for the salve, it's great for knees. Uh, my grandma has the worst knees and uh, I hate to use her as a, well, I love to use her as a reference actually, because she loves my scalp. Um, she was still, she's like 85 years old and still walking around just fine. And her, she's got like, I think two new knees now, but uh, she uses the salve for her knees. She also uses it for her feet. I know uh, I've got clients that say that um, they have really bad, like they're walking around a lot and I don't know you know what the, the diagnosis is but their feet just like really hurt at the end of the day um so they put myself on their feet before they fall asleep and so it really helps them and so wow. it, it's just a bunch of things that it does i know it really helps with inflammation i know inflammation is one of the major sources of why like these problems can happen and like your your wrist and your feet because uh once you start swelling i guess the blood flow just really can't you know circulate and do what it needs to do to properly heal or take care of what it needs to take care of because of the inflammation. So because the CBD takes care of the inflammation and allows your body to kind of like react better and like heal what needs to be healed. So I, I, I don't have any like medical statements behind me, but it kind of feels like it helps your body naturally heal itself a little bit more. Well, instead of like how Advil, like they'll just cover the problem like a Band-Aid. They don't exactly heal it. So with CBD, I know like they're finding it that Instead of just uh, covering the hole, it's actually helping the hole get filled and it's actually like, you know, helping it heal. So, all right. So let's say somebody has a little bit of pain in a knee. How often would you, would you use the salve? For the salve and the knee, I would start off just doing, um, I'll put it right here on my wrist. Like I said, I got a little bad, we'll treat it like this. Here's like half a teaspoon, a little bit on the finger side. Gotcha. Take that, throw it on there. I just rub it right where it hurts. I just put a direct topical on her. Um, one of the things I know that we kind of were looking for is like the absorption rates. Um, a lot of like lotions and like salves, like what nobody really likes, that greasy, long lasting feeling. And um, it didn't really take us long actually to find the right recipe to get rid of that. Mm. Uh, we just got rid of all the unnatural oils that a lot of, a lot of the stuff that we found in these recipes. We also got rid of like all the alcohol in it and I didn't put a timer on this. This stuff is a little bit thicker just because it's the salve. And as you can see, it's got the 2000 milligrams in there. 
oh, you know, I won't try to do all that. Just take my word for it. It's on the, it's on the website. It's got the 2000 milligrams on it. And oh. it comes in a four ounce jar. Um, I think we got it going right now for $65, which is quite the steal. But uh, you do that. And like, I'll say, see how it feels. But honestly, 20, 25 minutes later, do that again. Just because once you do it again, it's just going to make sure that you're not going to have any problems with it. And that's all you really got to do. And how long do you think it would last? Like, okay, let me give you an example. Um, let's say I'm going to work out tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. When would I put it on? And how do you, how long would it last? Typically, everybody's different. Every situation yeah. is different. Yeah. Oh, like I find like you'll find re- you'll get relief within like around 20 to 30 minutes. Like I how fast I find you, you'll get the relief, but how long will it keep the pain away? Like up to like 24 to 48 hours, I find. Wow. And it really does. Seems to me it keeps the problem away for longer and longer. Interesting. Wow. Thanks for suggesting that. Didn't even yeah, think of it. Sure. And here's here's the crazy thing. I bought CBD, I think it was a roll-on or something like that for a friend that had a shoulder issue, but yeah. I didn't even think about my knee. <laughs> it's right. a thing. And I guess that, you know, they said it worked, but again, I don't know about the you know that the, the quality of that particular product. You know, I know sure, sure. what we're dealing with there. We do have a, a call. I'm gonna reach in. Hey, can you hear us? Hi, yes. Hi, who's this? Hi, this is Miranda calling from Houston, Texas. Miranda, welcome. We have uh, Jacob with the purple nugget on. You got a CBD question? Yes. So I'm on Seroquel for my anxiety, but I just feel like it's not doing what it's supposed to. Um, I don't know if like they have a product that could be like you know best effective for me to help my anxiety. Like if they have anything, they recommend me to take. Gotcha. So she's looking for something for anxiety relief. Yeah, I heard yeah. that. Yep, yep. Well, first off, I think Texas is a beautiful state. I serve with more people from Texas than any other state. And I got to tell you, those are some of the best people I've ever met. Uh, my second answer to that would be our oils. Uh, it's going to be just pretty much the same thing that I'm sure you're used to seeing. You would take it, you put it under your tongue for about 15 to 25 seconds and you would swallow. But uh, these okay. right here, have, we have clients that swear this is what helps them. This is what they take for anxiety. Okay. Uh, and, right. and how often would you take that? I would, it depends on how bad your anxiety is, I suppose. Uh, some clients would take yeah, it wanted, once in the morning. Uh, I'm sorry, say again, Miranda? Um, I was just wondering, like, should I take it when, like, my anxiety comes on, like, after, like, it wears off, I guess? Um, you know, I'd probably prepare yourself. Uh, I'd probably just take it in the morning and see how that affects you throughout the day. And if uh, you find that it, it didn't really do much, take it once in the morning and once in the afternoon. I, I think that would probably be something that you would feel a difference in once you started doing that. But uh, just see how, like, you know, what triggers your anxiety and see how you feel once you hear those triggers and how you react to it. And it might take a couple of days for you to actually get the full effect of it. I can't, you know, just like I think the Xanax that you were taking, I think if the doctor says you got to stay on it for a little bit to kind of let your, you know, your your body and your brain to kind of like know how to react to it. I imagine they said something like that. Yeah. CBD is kind of the same thing. You got to kind of let your body and your mind learn how to react to these triggers. And uh, what you're right. going to find is that when these triggers happen, you're going to say and react, and then you're going to look back at that and be like, holy crap. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't act out. I, you know, I thought logically and everybody's happy with it. And I didn't, you know, have my rise or my low of roller coasters that, you know, we typically find ourselves on when we're in these anxiety moments. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Miranda. And, uh, and good luck. And check out, check out Jacob's website, the P nug.com. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. That's, we should tell everybody here too. Not going to hurt you. So, yeah. you know, to try it in the morning and then maybe try it later in the day. Uh, a lot of people just start their day, especially those with anxiety with some kind of CBD. Um, yeah. I, I, and there's, I think that's one of the fears that people have like, oh, I, I'm going to do some harm. I might overdose on CBD. You'd have to take a lot, I would assume. To, I don't, I, you, I, I'm pretty sure that there are still, you, there's never been a case of overdose on THC or CBD ever reported in any time in history. As far as I'm concerned, if I'm wrong, please send me a message. I will type that in up and I'll eat those words. But I, I, I hear you, and I'm a geek. I, I search it out. I look, I'm curious. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't I think have, there ever has been. I don't think there's a, if, if, if anything, maybe 
and correct me if I'm wrong, I, I thought I heard this, that if you take way, way too much CBD, and if you did, you know you're doing it, that you could get a little anxious. That, and, and, and that's about it. That's what I heard. Um, for me, I did take the first time I took gummies for sleep. I think I took 50 milligrams out of the gate. And okay. it wasn't any problem. It was just, uh, I was groggy the next day. I definitely took way too much. You know, yeah. I should have started with 25 or something in that territory. Um, you know, I don't do gummies. I know it's a real popular thing. And I'm not, I'm sure a lot of people, you know, might say why, but uh, there's just too much sugar in them. Uh, there's just way too much sugar. And like, I don't know how that much sugar with something that's trying to help you sleep can really, hmm. I, I, you know, I think. <laughs> I don't know. I think there's a better way to do it. And not only that, but there's people who are diabetic that can't really take the sugar like that. Interesting point, Jacob. I just want to say that's an interesting point. I never put the correlation between the sugar, which could hype you up. So uh, much sugar, Steve. Really? Ridiculously amount of sugar. I mean, and I tried doing it with like less sugar, less CBD. But and like another problem that I found is that I couldn't put the amount of CBD that I would want to claim that's going to make a change by taking it in my gummies without it tasting horrible because it's just uh, the way it just, I don't know. I've, I've tested other gummies and they don't seem to have a lot of CBD in it. They seem to have a lot of sugar in it. And so that's why I just don't see it really worth my time or my products. So wow. stay away from it. And, and the perception is that, it's this little tiny gummy. How much sugar could possibly be in that little gummy? Mm. You're surprised. I, can't, <laughs> I don't even know how many cups we put in there, but it was like four cups of sugar for like one batch. Of sugar. Wait, I'm serious. Well, I'm, you know what? Thank you for sharing that. And I've got like two and a half left in the, in the container that I had bought again from another company. Um, done. You know, I'd rather just... I think people do gummies because it's almost like a treat. It's like, I'm going to treat myself. And I'm going to help myself at the same time, but you're actually, it's, it's going counterproductive if you're adding my sugar. I, in it. That's, that's my consensus on it. But you know, I mean, no, I'm sure other people believe other things and everyone's perfectly okay to believe whatever they want. Yeah. Well, you know, you, you've done the research and, uh, and, and you tried it, tried to make it and yeah. Cups and I successfully them. made them. I just like the people that use them, like the clients that I truly trust. Like I, I did it myself. You know, I was like, Hey, we sat down in a room and said, what do you guys think about this? Like, is this something we really want to go? Are we going against the wind a little bit with this? Right. And uh, one of them being diabetic was like, Jake, like I, I would never take them. I don't see why people take them. I've had to deal with sugar levels my whole entire life. You know, he just had a complete background of like sugar. Oh, I'm like, you know what? So we'll stay away from it. Uh, no you know, if you want gummies, there's enough companies out there that are doing them. You'll, you'll find them. Uh, you've, you've already convinced me. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> I'm, I'm tincture. I'm fine with that. That's okay. Yeah. You know, I just want to get the job done. And actually, taking tincture gets into your system faster anyway. So, it does. It you know, does. that's the other part of it. Jacob, tell everybody, uh, remind them of your website. And uh, I, I'm, I'm sure that you have some way on there that somebody can contact you, ask questions, right? Absolutely. You can message me. I am pretty fast about messaging people back. So is my wife. We kind of take turns with it. Uh, but it's www.lovepnug.com. T-H-E-P-N-U-G.com. Yeah, you guys do great stuff and and so unique. And the passion comes out and uh, I got to get me some more. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, I'm going to send you some free stuff, Steve. So don't worry about it. I'll, I'll step you up there. Yeah, it's. Uh, I I hope that more people realize and thank you that 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 CBD is so beneficial and uh, and thankfully there's people like you out there that uh, can help us along the way and I look forward to uh, catching up again next time, Jacob. All right, perfect. Thank you very much, Steve. Thank you. We'll be right back. Are you looking for even more of the podcast and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you can now listen live on the MyTuner Radio and online Radio Box apps for iOS, Android, and the Amazon App Store. Or check us out online. Search for Business News Network on mytuner-radio.com or search Podcast Business News Network on onlineradiobox.com slash US so you don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. 
day-to-day -day simple task can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knock down, I mean, it's, it's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicap-accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.